Hey, good morning guys. Today is Thursday, May 9th. And today is a big day because we are going to plant out our tomatoes and sow bean seeds. Uh, but before we go out and get dirty, I thought I would share some eye candy with you and let you get up close and personal with our beautiful bearded iris collection that um, adorns the front of our property. And a lot of people stop and take pictures and everyone really enjoys it. So let's take a walk and get a close up look at some of our beautiful bearded iris. This is uh, one of the first bearded irises that we really started paying attention to when we moved in here 11 summers ago. So it's been over 10 years. This um, bearded iris is one of the many varieties that was here when we moved in. Just absolutely gorgeous. We started moving them around the yard and uh, what a great move it was to make. Now, I don't have the name of any of these varieties. Uh, this one here was gifted to me from a friend last year. And last year it did not bloom up here in the front. It took a while. So uh, this one was a little bit late to show up, but look at that interior, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, it gets better and better every time I look at it. And this beautiful pristine white variety was here when we moved in. And oh gosh, I wish I would have paid better attention. Sorry for the traffic. Um, when we moved in and I realized there were a few colors that had gotten given away um, because our landscaper dug them up and removed them when we were getting our patio put in. And I, again, I just didn't realize what we had inherited. Um, look at this beautiful orange. Now we keep these all along the front of our house because we're making the front into um, more of a garden. We've eliminated the grassy strip and we will be doing a separate video about that. Um, and the wall is still under construction. Um, so we usually start off with this beautiful buttery yellow shade um, that is just jaw dropping mixed in with the variegated white and purple, really stunning. And then it will change uh, as we as we sweep around to red and orange. Um, I wish that it would just last all summer long. Everyone absolutely loves it. So here's a portion of the grassy strip when you come down from the front door. Um, and this is the view that you get. So people have been respectful that I can see so far. Um, but they do fall down and some people let their dogs run through them. So not cool. So what I really love about the, the mix of colors, you know, as I was saying over here, I love purple and yellow together. Really just gorgeous. And then the, uh, the ends are flanked in the white, same as down by the mailbox. But as the yellow starts to fade down here and the orange comes up, incredible color then this is another one that was gifted so only a few uh, colors were gifted we will be doing more videos um, when we have better light so today I'm taking advantage of this overcast sky to get the tomatoes out because it's perfect a perfect day for that make sure when you grow flowers you guys if you're new to it that you look inside there's so much inside here really just beautiful. And a closer look at this glorious yellow. I love the, stri the uh, striping and striation that's inside of it. Really incredible. I would love to add more colors. So anyway, that was a little bit of eye candy to start the day. Before we get dirty, as I said, now we're about to go out and plant some tomatoes. So I hope you enjoyed that bearded iris tour. Last year's pansies, you guys, coming back. Incredible. I never started a new batch for this year. It's fine focus. But I plan on doing um, a late season planting for the fall. I think this will be the last year for our beautiful pink azaleas that were here when we moved in. They've unfortunately had so many problems with disease. Um, we have to tear them out. More than half of them are gone, but I wanted to get a quick video so I could remember it. All right, boys, 
Are you going to be good? Are you going to be good while I plant beans and tomatoes? Can you say hello? Huh? Alex? Alex? Ock, are you going to be good? Are you going to be good, Aki, on this beautiful overcast day? Can you say hello? What do you see in the sky? Is there anything out there? Huh? Say hello to everyone. You're not going to say hello? You got sneezy nose? You're probably taking a bath in your bowl, huh? Bad. All right, everybody. Come on, Mr. Buddy. What's got you spooked? You going to be a good boy today? You just have plenty to say when there's no camera, huh? Are you going to say flower today, Mr. Buddy? Flower. Flower. I have a very loud frog croaking in the pond, so you may hear that from time to time. And I have to get the boys situated before I bring stuff out and make sure that the area is secure because we do get snakes around here and there's often hawks hiding in places. So we have to make sure that every birdie is safe before we bring them out into the netted aviary. Um, and now I'm going to show you my green bean variety that I'll be sowing today. And then we'll be moving out the tomato plants. I'll be so happy when all of this insanity is like the mess is behind me though. I love gardening and I love harvesting, but I'm so grateful. But you know, the, the mess, we talk about this all the time. So anyway, let's look at beans. Okay, so I've gone and laid out all of my varieties. I think I might have missed a few. I'm not really certain. I thought I had, I don't know, I have so much stuff. Anyway, I like to soak my beans overnight before I sow them, but I don't soak them for too long because you can drown your beans. Some people direct sow them, and I probably could um, when we have this much rain coming. When you start to see them bubbling like that, it's a good indicator that you need to get them out of the water because they're releasing their gases and they can get soggy and drown. So the first one I'm trying again is this French filet, which I love thin French green beans. I have not had any luck with this yet. It's my third attempt trying it, but I'm, I'm going to keep going until the beans are gone. Blue Lake Bush does wonderful from Botanical Interest and Baker Creek, so you see I'm going to grow them in an area very close to each other so I can compare. I know both usually do well, but this is the first time I'm actually separating them. And I've created labels for every variety. This Royal Burgundy grows well. It always shows up in the garden. It hangs on with the heat. It does not get mosaic virus. The bugs don't seem to like it as much as the green beans for some reason. Um, and this is very tasty and beautiful, crisp, snappy bean freezes well. Contender is new for me this year. It says that you get, um, wow, fresh beans in only 50 days. We'll see. I'm going to mark the calendar and make sure that uh, we know what we're really dealing with. Again, I have labels for everything. And then over here is the jade bean. Again, I've been growing this for several years from Baker Creek. Have not really had any luck with this. There was another bean similar to this that I was growing, which was the Kalima bean. That one grew really well, but it has a gray bean inside, and I just cannot psychologically eat gray beans. They have to be green. So the Blue Lake Bush is always a small green bean inside unless you get it, let it get too large. Then over here is another variety of Bush Filet Tavera. Um, so again, it is a quick 54 days, supposedly. I like Botanical Interest products. I hope they stay as good with the quality. Um, now over here I have, um, which originated from Chef Jeff's, bought at a farm stand and a friend gave these to me. Um, she dried out her beans and saved them. I've been growing them for the past two years. This will be my third season with them. Hopefully they show up. If they do not, I have a fresh pack from Botanical Interest. Um, and these are a pole bean. The rest are bush beans. So you're going to want a support and a trellis for this. The Kentucky Wonder um, pole bean grows a, a broad bean almost. It's very wide and somewhat flat, um, but still uh, tasty. And it grows quick, and, but the bugs really like it. The Japanese beetles in particular really, really love this. bringing my pepper plants out for their daily dose of sunshine, even though it's a little overcast today. They look really great.
protect your back, you guys. Protect your back. I got this belt, this Tommy Copper belt from Costco on sale for like $5 at one point. They keep bringing it back out. It ranges from $10 to $8, sometimes down to $4.97. So if you have back problems, get yourself a belt. You're going to need it. So there might be an easier way to do this. I don't really know, but I'm careful to make sure my labels are in all my little bowls here for the beans and I'm gonna start dragging them back to go into the garden. In case you were wondering, yes, my shirt does say Kellogg's Fruit Loops. This is a vintage shirt that I got from Stephen Barry's, oh, more than 20 years ago, probably 24 years ago. And <laughs> they just don't make shirts of this quality anymore. And back then when I bought it, I thought that it wasn't good quality. But this thing has been through so much, it's my favorite gardening shirt. I love it. And anyway, don't forget your dibber. You're gonna need it for this. It makes the job easier because it tells you uh, roughly how deep to plant. And I can attach the link for this. I got it from Amazon, so it'll be easy for you to find. Yeah, so I'm back here uh, where we planted our corn and the corn goes here every single year. Um, Farmer John expanded it slightly for me this year, so because normally I like to shove a row of beans into the corn. The beans always do really great growing under the corn. Um, so they are two uh, plants that are that are suggested that you plant uh, together as companions. Uh, I will be doing succession sowing of beans, even though I'm planting a lot of beans today. I will be sowing my succession in other areas to ensure that I have um, a good spread to make sure if there's a problem in one area, hopefully there's not a problem in another. Now, this is our first time using this soil this year and my fingers are so crossed that it's going to be good soil because it's been six days since we sowed our corn and normally I see it in four days, but its germination period is seven to 10. So the weather's been good. We've had a little rain. There's really no reason why I shouldn't have corn right now, so I'm a little scared. You're going to want to stay tuned to see if our corn germinates and how well our beans do, so let's get to sowing. So my theme this year is organization, you guys. I'm going to just mark off little square areas here and get these beans going. They generally like to be planted, uh, sowed about an inch deep and about four inches in spacing and about two feet between rows. I'm only going to have one row here, but there's plenty of space for me to have uh, one variety in uh, like a one foot square area where I can have four or five beans. So I like to just, you know, take my dibber and make it easy. And I've used it so much, I've worn off the one inch, but you know, that's about all you need. It's just a little tiny hole. And then you pop your, your seed in. The nice thing about using a meter dibber also, or with measurement, um, is it will tell you how far apart things are. So if you want to plant something four inches apart, you know, and you make a little hole here, and then you just have to go up to where it shows you four inches on your on your dibber, and you can get a good measurement. And really, we could probably do rows of three here that closely, but I'm probably going to separate them by uh, six inches. All right, so that took me 10 minutes of being well organized, of planting 35 bean, um, bean seeds, sowing 35 bean seeds um, into this little area here. So again, fingers crossed, you guys. Let's move on to tomato plants so you can see how well the root balls did. All right, let's go check out some tomato inventory. Sorry for a little wobbly. We have not invested in a gimbal to stabilize the camera as we move. And we did invest in a microphone, but for some reason my brain doesn't want to use it. Um, here are three, four flats of my tomatoes. So you can see how big they are. They're above my knee. Um, they definitely want to grow. And some of them are so heavy that it's now become dangerous to the plant for me to move them in and out of the greenhouse because they're just unstable. Even though they're staked, they want to flop over. I'm so grateful for a day like today because they are getting a break. It's been scorching out here already, you guys. But aren't they beautiful? Wow. Well, you guys, it's a good thing I no longer have like a paralyzing fear 
of bees because the borage has been just alive and buzzing with these bees and um, it's so colorful the borage is so wonderful again I grew this last year and never re-sowed it it just I don't know if these are volunteers or if they just never really fully died back and they've become perennial I'm not really sure but if you're looking for something to attract the bees and having something to offer early in the season before you've planted out your garden maybe consider trying borage because the bees have moved in and I have places where there's so many bees, I have to move carefully because even though they've been friendly, I don't wanna make any foolish moves that could upset them or have them think that I'm invading their space and get stung because I've been lucky enough to say I've never been stung by a bee before. So I think I'm going to start today with the Parks Whopper. Now I have said before, this is our staple, um, but something has changed about these, this variety where it just doesn't grow the way it used to. It's almost more determinant than indeterminate. It used to grow like wild and produce pounds and pounds of tomatoes where I would pull at least 20 pounds a day just from the Parks Whoppers, but now they've slowed down. I get a big harvest early in the season. It's like an early girl, so 55 to 65 days. We usually always have tomatoes from the Parks Whopper by July 5th, and they're usually big, giant, like big slicing tomatoes. Now they're smaller, and while they're still delicious, it's like one big, um, production and then it takes a break and it gets very dramatic and wilts and gets blight and then it tries to come back in the fall. In the past it would start in July and it would not end until late October. So that's why I'm trying so many different varieties but this plant I think is 18 to 24 inches. This would be a $20 uh, tomato plant in the big box stores and look I don't know if you can see um, where did I just see right here where my finger is starting to want to produce flowers so these flowers are high I'm going to allow this cluster to stay if it was happening low in the plant I would snip them off because when the plant tries to concentrate on producing flowers or fruit very low in the plant it will not allow the height to happen because all of the energy stays where the flower production is so I'll snip off these lower leaves and create little tomato trees. I'm going to plant this as deep as I possibly can to ensure really thick root growth. Not that it's gonna to need too much help, you can see. This was already potted up once, you guys, so let's get it out of the pot and see how it looks. This is really a perfect day for this. The light's not great for videos, but it's great for planting tomatoes because you don't really wanna plant your tomatoes out on a scorching, sun blaring day it's just too much stress for them now we do have some pretty good rain coming tonight so i know everything's going to get watered in um, here in new jersey northwestern burlington county um, they are predicting that we could go down into the high to mid 40s between 45 and 48 potentially over the next few nights but if we end the day with this type of cloud cover and it's this warm and humid i think it will stay stable it might go down into the low 50s. I don't really believe that it'll see the 40s, but it's only going, going to be two nights of exposure. And I don't wanna say that this is something I recommend to anyone, even though in our conversations, I know a lot of people have gone ahead and started planting out. It's really not an ideal situation for the production of flowers. Uh, whereas the same on the same note, anything over 80 degrees is not an ideal situation for producing flowers. So growing healthy tomatoes that grow for a long season can be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to make sure that when I put them in the ground, just like I do every year, I give them a good feeding. So I buy the Kirkland brand Tums and every plant gets one or two Tums into the hole that I'll dig for them. I like to add some blood meal. You can get this from several different vendors um, at Lowe's. I think they have, I think they're using Stay Green this year. Um, I like this pelleted fertilizer. This really worked well. It's a slow release pelleted fertilizer. And these will all go into the end, into the bottom of the hole. Um, and then I'll splash bone meal 
This is the stay green product that I was mentioning. Foam meal will get splashed onto the walls of the hole as well as the worm castings that I got at Costco. So if you see this worm casting, you guys, it's around 12 bucks, I think. I got them on sale for $5 at one point. The sale of Costco is fluctuating on everything this year. So grab yourself some worm castings, it's important. So I'll take everything that's in the hole and I kind of mix it up like a little bit of a recipe. The last splash is worm castings and then I'll go ahead and put my um, tomato into its forever home. Well, I already have one in uh, that I planted actually last week. Um, I did get a little bit of a head start with just a few tomatoes just to see what happened and how well they would do. This park swapper actually looks really good. It picked up its darker green leaves again, so it must be getting some nutrients. Whereas this one is a little bit pale, but it's only because it's in this pot and its roots are thirsty constantly. It's hungry again. So when you get it into the ground and you give it all these nutrients, bone meal and blood meal and calcium are critical for the development of fruit and, and canopy and everything. So give everything a good feeding. Don't forget you guys, and they'll bounce back just like this one did here. And you can see, I took off all of its lower leaves so that it's not laying on the ground. It's already ready to be clipped off with one of these little nifty clips that I left out for it. And so you can see the difference in height because I was able to bury this one all the way down because we created nice deep beds. So there's a lot of theories about how far to separate your plants. I usually do pruning. So I usually plant them about 12 inches apart. Um, and then I just keep a, a close monitor on them. You can do it however far you want. It really is good to know how your humidity levels are though, which has a great effect on how well your tomatoes can go. Now, we're not experts at any of this, but I've been growing tomatoes in this yard. This will be my 11th summer. Um, and we are forever students of the garden. So we, we're not telling you what to do or how to do it. I'm just telling you how I do it, uh, really. So, you know, if you over fertilize, you know, I'm not giving you any measurements because I eyeball everything just like I do when I cook food. There's a little splash here, a little splash there. And with experience, you'll uh, start to understand how much you need without measuring cups. The bags do recommend what dose you should give everything. So you'll want to pay quick attention to that. I'm fertilizing each individual plant and I'm not doing a mass fertilizing of the entire beds because Fertilizer sitting too close to the surface can cause some fungus and some mold to happen through the bed. So I like to give everything a deep feeding so there's no fertilizer at the top waiting to grow any kind of crazy mold that will cause a big problem. So I'm going to open up this hole and uh, get this baby planted. Now this little diggy that I got, it's a Fiskars and I got this, it's a cultivator. Um, or a hand shovel, hand trowel, you can call it all different kinds of things. This is measured or metered, however you want to say it, where you can see four inches. So you can tell approximately how deep you're going. So this will dig down at least six inches in a full scoop, but you want to go down as far as you possibly can. This will also tell you your spacing. So you can see that these squares that I'm dealing with are about six inches apart. So I know that one, two square so one two represents one foot this is with my hog panel that we bought from tractor supply so i'm going to dig a nice deep hole here and get ready to get it in years of working these beds our soil has improved so much that no matter how far down i dig you can see that this has good drainage it has years of compost in it and uh that's about how deep we are so we're going down almost a foot which is going to really allow this stem here to get good coverage okay again i'm not measuring got no tripod worm castings putting that into the bottom of the hole i like to do just a little sprinkle of some slow release pelleted fertilizer not too much too much fertilizer can cause some some uh, burning problems Next, I'll be adding a little sprinkle of the blood meal, just a sprinkle. Really good for the development of your canopy. A little splash of bone meal. And then I'm just gonna take a Tums and I'm gonna crunch it up and I need two hands to do that, but um, I'm gonna get a little nice 
powder going in here and get it against the walls so that we have good coverage. I'm just gonna follow this little recipe off with another splash of worm castings, which you just can't go wrong with. This is really wonderful for the garden. Lots of nutrients and worm castings. Now for this, I had to step away from the bed because the plant is so big. You can see I took the little lower leaves off like I was saying and the good news is when I snip them off I can feel a lot of moisture in the stem so this plant has been drinking well. Um, I'm going to take out this steak. Here's a good hack for you you guys or a dupe whatever you want to call it. This is a barbecue skewer, wooden skewer I got from Wegmans and they work great for your little seedlings um, and it's like $3.50 for a whole pack of them and they're holding up well. I've used them again the second time this year and they have big ones and small ones. So that's what I had in my little starter cup. So now I'm going to uh, turn this whopper upside down and get it out of the cup so we can see what we have look at the roots and even holding it upside down it does not want to come out of this pot really very easily because uh the roots really want to hold it in but these um bootstrap farmer cups are excellent for air pruning this does not want to come out so we're going to have to give it a little encouragement oh you see that all right here we go oh will you look at that oh my gosh this poor thing, it is so hungry and thirsty. I'm telling you, I did not, this hasn't been in this cup for very long. Amazing. So it's doing well, they held up well, and the soil's actually very moist inside. Um, so the biggest risk uh, besides letting them dry out, you never wanna let your seedlings dry out. Well, these are plants at this point, they're not even really seedlings. These roots want to be fed, and again, if they're not fed, and they're not properly aerated, or if you have too much water in them, too much water is just as bad because you get root rot, you get uh, gnat infestations in here. There's no gnats coming out of this cup, which is really great. They did have gnats while they were in the house, but they left uh, once they came out to harden off. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this into the soil and uh, we're gonna cover it up and wish it the best. All right, there we go. Wow, even dug down a foot and uh, getting it in for good coverage with all the soils going to mound up, you can see how much this plant grew. Again, I started these seedlings indoors on March 13th. This is incredible. Uh, these leaves look just amazing. I am feeling very encouraged on this beautiful overcast day. I love this weather. All right, let's cover her up. And it's okay if your plants aren't standing up really straight, you guys. I mean, you don't want, you can let them grow sideways. Tomato plants will grow sideways. But I'm going to lean this in and I'm going to clip it off. Um, so, you know, they'll, they'll grow just fine if they're at an angle. But if you want to lean them, encourage them to lean towards a trellis and not just towards open space. They are going to need support, um, a lot of support actually. So. Get a good mound of soil on these, pack it down, and we're gonna give it a drink. Another thing I'm teaching you today is a quick way to totally destroy your hands because once again, I'm not wearing gloves. Something I like to do now is even though I'm mounding this up, you know, we're all guilty of giving things a little bit of a volcano effect as we build up. What I like to do is just create a little bit of almost like a donut mound around the center of it, which is a well. And so that when you fill it with, uh, give it a nice drink of water, you're going to let it pool inside this ring area so that it drinks deep. You wanna make sure you have good percolation, that your water is not puddling around the top or running off like little lava trails. So um, go slow at first to make sure your soil is not hydrophobic. Give it a good drink and um, you know, keep it watered. It's very, very important. If your leaves look like they're drooping in any way, it needs a drink. These little clips here I got from Amazon and I can attach a link for you. Um, they're very inexpensive. If you leave them outside all season, they do tend to deteriorate and crack, but this is recycled from last year because we collected them early, put them in a container and brought them in. And they're, uh, you can see this one is a little bit old. It got a little bit of crap crack on it but it's still usable so you basically just want to um, get the tomato lined up where it has plenty of support and then you clip it on and that's it
no and this has plenty of room so that as the plant starts to grow the stem won't uh it won't dig into the stem and and cut off the um uptake of fluid All right, so two park swappers down lots of volunteers growing i'm going to talk to you about some of the things that are in this bed in another video i've got one hungarian heart in which is also uh done quite well overnight um I have six Jersey Devils that will take over this whole trellis. Jersey Devils, you guys, one of the best paste tomatoes I have ever had in my life. They look really very happy today. Uh, we have a lot of weeding to do, so much work out here, so many repairs. But this is the area where the Roma tomatoes are going to grow, which are the MI Gardener Roma. And uh, I got one of those in last week and then i put two in late yesterday afternoon once the sun started to set um and they are very grateful for going into the ground so gosh i'm feeling just really really inspired now when i take their green leaves off like i show you to create these little trees you really don't want your leaves laying on the ground it gives the opportunity for all sorts of stuff to take over and make your tomatoes sick so later on, we'll get into pruning tomatoes as they grow. But when I cut off these leaves, they, they are a good source of like compost. So I just kind of just bury them down a little bit. I don't waste anything. Oh, look at the New Jersey sky, everyone. We're gonna get some rain today. Hopefully it will be a gentle and kind rain for the tomato plants. So on that note, knowing that weather's coming and we have lots to do today, it's already almost lunch. I've already, prepared and cleaned up three meals because I'm cooking for myself and Farmer John and then I have the boys, uh, they get a fresh cooked meal every day. So now I'm about to go on to another meal once I get this done, but I still have at least 60 tomato plants to go. And if I stand here and I keep talking to you, I'll never get anything done. But thank you for joining me on uh, this little day of sowing bean seeds and planting out some of my tomato plants and the bearded iris tour um, if you like all that you guys please give the video a thumbs up i hope it helps you as well and please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already if this is your first time stopping here my name is lee this is our backyard garden and we are located in northwestern burlington county new jersey the garden state so please stay with us come on our summer long journey for 2024 and see how we do so if you want to see all of these beds planted out with tomatoes and peppers you'll need to stay tuned for the next video hope to see you there guys take care